Ukraine has struck Russian territory using US-provided ATACMS missiles, marking the 1000th day of war. Moscow claimed five of six missiles were intercepted, with one causing minor damage in the Bryansk region. President Biden approved Ukraine's use of these long-range missiles, escalating tensions. Russia warned of retaliation, viewing Washington as a direct combatant. Russian President Vladimir Putin has lowered the nuclear strike threshold, allowing retaliation for conventional attacks threatening Russia's or Belarus's territorial integrity. The updated doctrine, approved on Tuesday, targets aggression involving nuclear state support. Moscow calls this a deterrent, emphasizing inevitable retaliation. The US dismissed the changes as rhetoric, but remains cautious. At least 50 Palestinians have been killed in Gaza over the past 24 hours, with Israeli strikes damaging Kamal Adwan Hospital, according to the Health Ministry. Total casualties since October 7 include nearly 44,000 killed and over 100,000 wounded in Gaza. Lebanon has reported 3,516 fatalities amid Israeli attacks on Hezbollah targets. In related news, UNICEF warns of a silent normalization of horror in Lebanon, where over 200 children have been killed and 1,100 injured in two months. However, the Israeli military has confirmed the death of a Golani Brigade soldier in recent fighting, with three others critically wounded. Meanwhile, Israeli group Amana, which promotes West Bank settlements, has condemned US sanctions imposed against it, calling the accusations baseless. Furthermore, the US Treasury has sanctioned six senior Hamas officials, accusing them of facilitating fundraising and weapon smuggling. Among the targeted figures are representatives based in Turkey and Gaza. Prime Minister Sheba Sharif has identified terrorism as the biggest obstacle to Pakistan's progress, urging united efforts to combat it. Addressing the National Action Plan's Apex Committee, he highlighted economic recovery through federal-provincial cooperation, citing single-digit inflation and a thriving stock exchange as key achievements. Meanwhile, former Prime Minister Imran Khan has called for nationwide protests on November 24, terming it a golden opportunity for real freedom. Criticizing alleged election rigging, enforced disappearances, and media restrictions he warned PTI leaders to participate or step aside. In defense news, the 12th International Defense Exhibition and Seminar is underway at Karachi's Expo Centre, featuring 350 delegations from 55 countries. Turkey and China lead the 560 exhibitors, with Iran and Italy participating for the first time. Lastly, in Punjab, schools are set to reopen on November 20th as air quality improves. Lahore's AQI has exited hazardous levels for the first time in weeks, with further improvement expected due to favorable weather conditions.